So this first section, session we'll look at uh, laser diffraction explained. So we'll be going through the, the basics of what the instrument measures, what light scattering is, and a basic look at what's inside the instrument and how it allows us to make measurements. We'll also go through a basic description of how we represent the results and how we get from the scattering data that we measure to a particle size distribution. So the other sessions in this series, we're going to look at um, how to develop your measurement method. So we'll look in the second one at achieving a reproducible particle size measurement, looking at the different parameters that you need to control to get a, a reproducible result. In session three, we'll look at optical property selection and look at different methods that you can use to choose the optical properties and how you can um, ensure that you've got the appropriate optical properties for your material. In session four, we'll do a little bit of, of troubleshooting and we usually ask for some questions that we can answer during that, that seminar and we look at data quality and, and what are common issues people can have with the laser diffraction measurement. And in the last seminar, we'll look at helping you to set a realistic specification. So, so specifications are reasonable, so that they fail when you, you know there's a real problem with your material, and you can reproducibly achieve your specifications when, when the samples are good. So laser diffraction's been a successful particle sizing technique for a long time, uh, more than 30 years now, and that's due to a range of different reasons. Firstly, looking at the, the wide dynamic range of the instrument, you can measure particles from 20 nanometers up to 2 millimeters in a single measurement without having to change any lenses. We can make very rapid measurements with laser diffraction, so particularly the spray tech instrument, which looks at dynamic events, so very short pulses of spray. We can acquire data at rates of up to 10 kilohertz, so we can get a size distribution. 10,000 times a second, and it allows you to look at short pulses in great detail. Laser diffraction measurements are very repeatable, because even at the lower speed measurements where we get a result once a second, we're integrating many a single snap to the detector to give us the final result, so we're collecting an awful lot of data to give us the final result. And if we, as we measure the samples for a number of seconds, we're sampling a large number of particles, and that gives us statistical significance even for, for broader distributions. The measurements themselves are quite fast, so we can make hundreds of measurements in a day, and that's a lot quicker than traditional techniques such as sieving, so you, could, you can get through quite a lot of samples in a day. The instruments themselves are not calibrated as such because laser diffraction is a first principles technique. So what that means is there isn't a dial on the instrument that we can turn to make it give us the right answer. So what we do instead is to validate the instrument using, um, is to verify the instrument using a standard reference material. So we put a latex sample or a glass bead sample through to make sure that the instrument's operating correctly because that can give us a known result and we can check out the instrument that way. And finally, because it's such a well-established technique, there are lots of publications about laser diffraction, in particular there's an ISO standard which covers the expected performance in terms of repeatability and reproducibility of measurements, and it describes the general principles of the technique itself as well. So before we get into any particle sizing as such, we'll look at, at light scattering phenomena on their own. That's what laser diffraction instruments measure. They measure light scattered by particles. So the first thing we're going to look at is a couple of everyday examples of, of light scattering, which are perhaps a bit easier to relate to to start with. Firstly, we have our blue sky, which wherever you are today, I'm not sure if you've got any blue sky outside. We certainly don't in Malvern. It's snowing. Um, but the blue sky is due to Rayleigh scattering. And this is scattering from particles in the atmosphere that are much smaller than the wavelength of light. So this type of scattering is much stronger for lower wavelengths. So the blue light is scattered a lot more strongly, and that's why we get a blue sky. The second example that we have on this slide is the rainbow, where it, which is caused by the scattering of white light by the water droplets. And the angle to which the, the different wavelengths of this white light are scattered depends on the wavelength. So each of the colors are separated, and that gives us this rainbow effect. What we'll look at next on this slide is a light scattering pattern. This is a, a diffraction pattern for some particles. 
So this is the type of scattering that we'll be measuring in the diffraction instrument. We'll have uh, the laser essentially pointing in towards the screen and we'll be hitting some particles and measuring the scattering from them. So what the instrument actually measures is the intensity of the scattered light as a function of the distance from the center of this pattern or as a function of the angle from the incident laser beam. So what we're measuring is the intensity of scattered light as a function of the angle from the center of the pattern. So our diffraction instrument is essentially taking a slice of cake out of this diffraction pattern, take a triangular section out of it to look at how the intensity varies with angle. 